Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. My lords, I am most grateful to my, to my noble friend, Lord Strathclyde, and the noble lady, Baroness Kennedy of the Shores, for generously acting as my supporters. And I would like to thank all members on both sides of the House for their welcome and courtesy toward me. Kafka said, before the law, a doorkeeper stands on guard. Well, he was certainly right in that respect. This house would not function without doorkeepers and the ushers, and I'm deeply grateful for their guidance and indeed their good humour. My lords, the clergyman and essayist Sidney Smith wrote, he wrote, I never read a book before, re before reviewing it. It prejudices a man so. <laughs> now, similar sentiments can be levied at those who comment on your Lordship's house without knowing very much about what it actually does. I fear that this may even relate to those who should know better. Scrutiny is a key function in this house but it also exemplifies something critical to the freedoms we enjoy today. Namely, the difference between being governed and ruled. Goethe was right to say, to rule is easy, to govern difficult. To be governed is to have a voice. In the case of your Lordship's house, it is also to act as a constraint on what the late learned Lord Helsham termed the elected dictatorship of the other place, but without competing against it. That your Lordship's house is ever vigilant over the precious mandate entrusted to it is critical. I am all the more aware of this inheritance for not having been born on these shores. I was born in China after my family were forced out of Russia following a revolution. A change of regime there set us on, on the move once again, making my family and myself a refugee. We found a new home in Australia when I was only a few months old. It is a country I continue to hold dear, and it is worth noting that today is Australia Day, the 26th yeah, of January. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I came to the United Kingdom in 1984. It is a country that has allowed me to thrive, to thrive. It is a country that has always been seen as a paradigm of parliamentary democracy, good governance, and indeed fairness. I feel deeply honored to have been able to serve a number of these great, of its great institutions and continue to do so. I've always had an interest in politics. And to be clear, given my family's history, which I will, uh, if, if anybody wants, we could have a beer, um, <laughs> my family's history, I have always had an acute interest in geopolitics. The world is becoming more complex and indeed dangerous, dangerous. It is exacerbated furthermore by climate change, which is not only very real, but presents its own security challenges. Though having qualified in science and engineering, my career for the last 40 years has been in global finance. And I'm deeply, deeply aware that economics is intrinsic to the effectiveness and well-being of the country. At this point, I should declare an interest as an honorary captain in the Royal Navy Reserve and as a former captain in the Australian Regular Army, where I served in the Royal Australian Electrical and Mechanical Engineers. For our civil society to function, it is critical for it to be served by professional armed forces. Critical. Their sense of service and duty is exemplified by my noble and gallant friend, and I do mean friend, Lord Peach, with whom I share this maiden speech day. My lords, the ability to legislate freely is something many take for granted. We should feel blessed rather than burdened that we have a solid constitutional 
we have a solid constitution with checks and balances, built up by precedents and by the lived experience of generations over centuries. This is not easy. It is protected by exceptionally professional, ethical and effective armed forces, who are there by consent, commanding the respect of the nation, our allies and, of course, the world. My noble friend, Lord Rotherman, Ro Ro Botham, is, is correct to highlight the issue of resilience. Support for the armed forces at this time is an absolute priority. And for our services to be effective, we must also ensure service families are adequately cared for. I was delighted to note the announcement of a revised family strategy. And here, I must again declare another interest as, a, being, as being a patron of the Royal Navy and Royal Marine Charity. The ambitions set out in the command paper Defence in a Competitive Age underline the range of threats we face. My Lords, it is well known that the price of freedom is eternal vigilance. But that vigilance is not, not free. Given what we're seeing in Europe currently, it is not contentious to say the world is becoming increasingly challenging and complex and dangerous. The UK's, the UK's regular place at or near the top of annual soft power surveys is something to be proud of. To be proud of. But soft power without hard power is frankly no power at all. The integrated review aims to create armed forces that, and I quote, that are both prepared for war fighting and more, and more persistent engaging worldwide. It is right, it is time to, be, to invest more, not less. One thing is very sure, complacency is not an option. My Lords, thank you for welcoming me. I sincerely hope I will add constructively to your Lordship's house, and I have every intention of doing so with the courtesy and graciousness I have seen others here. Yeah. 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 My Lords, it's a great pleasure to follow uh, the noble Lord, Lord Hinsey, in his uh, maiden speech and to, uh, and to uh, applaud and uh, agree with his final sentiment that complacency is not an option. I know him, I know him well and I recognise uh, his remarkable successful business career, his pride in his Australian background on this uh, Australia Day. Uh, uh, but also his remarkable record for philanthropy, uh, not only to the armed forces, but to institutions like the Natural History Museum. Uh, he has a lot of experience, uh, a lot of wisdom, and we therefore look forward to hearing more from him in the future. Yeah. Yeah. But my lords, I intend to speak about uh, Ukraine, uh, about which we really should 